yeah, man. Um, getting this thing started and getting right into it. How would you describe what it is exactly that you do? Or maybe what is it that you talk about on your channel? I think that in the bottom of things, I show that it's okay to feel what you're feeling. And we often get lost and confused to doing things. We can get attached to perhaps a work situation or to addiction or whatever it is. And at the core of that, we're sort of running from ourselves, a deeper acceptance of who we truly are. So that's a little bit what I like to talk about. I like to talk about the subconscious mind and how it can influence us to sort of move away from the authentic version of who we are, where things can truly be really amazing for you in a way that it cannot be, mm. but it requires you to be vulnerable in that space. And that's the reason why so many people choose to not live there and why I live most of my life unconsciously through a lot of programs, through a lot of different things that I even did within my personality. I was always overthinking things. I was trying to improve myself all the time. I didn't give myself a break. And it's a lot of things that I was doing that was not really who I was and just a coping mechanism for not daring to go deeper or perhaps believing that I that I'm allowed to go deeper, mm -hmm. believing things about myself that made it so that I settled for a reality that never could give me what I sought for or what I was searching for. Wow. Powerful stuff. Um, so essentially the essence is we have to embrace our emotions more, feel how we feel. And that leads the way for us to truly know who we are deep down? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, that's a tricky part also, because when you live your life unconsciously for a long time through programs of things, then you kind of lose, lose touch with your emotional world. It kind of starts to disappear more and more as your awareness that you are, the conscious awareness as you are is always placed on these programs that works as a way to disconnect from the body and its emotions yeah and i'd like to see the body as and your emotions as a part of the totality of who you are part of god universe consciousness whatever you want to call it and so while you're rejecting that and instead living through these unconscious programs things just isn't what it should be yeah it's an experience, but it's an experience that is never going to take you to what you seek. Uh, yeah. And that's something that we all seek, right? Knowing or having at least some semblance of knowing of who we are, you know, some semblance of purpose, some semblance of fulfillment. Would you say that's like something that's ingrained in every single human being? A need for purpose or? A need for knowing who we are. And then in that, I feel as though it does bring purpose. So yeah, you could say both like purpose and knowing thyself, I, I would say are kind of congruent with each other. But um, yeah, do you know what I'm getting at? I guess so, kind of. I feel like purpose is you are purposeful as you are and there's nothing more to it than that. Like when you start being who you are, that is purposeful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that people who are disconnected from who they are, they go and search for purpose. Yeah. And they fail to recognize that they are purpose. Mm -hmm. But it's, I think it can be painful to think that, I mean, if you have, let's say, a low sense of self-worth or a low sense of self-love, you want more meaning, you want more understanding, you want more something to be more grand than you because you seem kind of small, I would say. Yeah. And like, it needs to be more to life than just me. But that's when you come from that place of disconnect, when you don't recognize just how amazing you really are and how big you are, how part of everything that you are. 
because you're feeling so disconnected and then like how can i accept myself and see the value of myself in this kind of space if that makes sense mm -hmm. yeah we are purpose i like that maybe what stops is the seeking for purpose in things that truly never bring us this purpose and fulfillment the never-ending search for that and finding out that yes just right here right now we are this said purpose yeah always and forever mm. yeah man so where would you recommend that uh we start on this path i know it is quite simple and just just being is purposeful itself just being is is it you know just simply here and now that's really what it's all about um but you know people always like to look for modalities and practices so is there like uh things that you would recommend or maybe not recommend for someone to see this in their life yes starting to allow things not always having to change things because even if we're looking for like the right modality or the right practice it doesn't require a practice or a modality to come closer to what it is that we're talking about here it just requires a a surrender yeah. and an allowance of what is and that can be very hard to understand when all your life you lived your life trying to change what it is that's always being experienced within you because that is something that is very common for us to, to learn to do when we grow up perhaps we're in a certain family situation that accepts certain part of us and when we are experiencing certain things within us they want us to not experience that they perhaps yell at us and say you can't be this version of yourself or you can't express this and also have our acceptance at the same time and then we can shape ourselves in different ways and yeah and it's easy to get lost in that process i feel like mm. yeah yeah of like trying to change trying to like change this whole process so really it just comes down to recognizing that uh we don't have it in control we think we have it in control and we try to control this whole process that we are caught in and that we are um but at the end of the day you're saying surrendering to a greater force way greater than this body some kind of greater force the way the Tao. that's the only way to be able to find this fulfillment find the self is just to like uh you know kind of let your hands off the steering wheel a little bit recognize that you don't got it all figured out and you'll never be able to control pretty much i mean the one thing most people never tried is to not try to not <laughs> yeah. try and control uh, yeah. So I feel like, you know, the need for control, we might believe that it's supposed to take us somewhere, but in the essence of control, it's more just a distraction mechanism yeah. that always keeps us attached to a matrix of a reality where we are doing things in a certain way to be occupied with our attention on those things, to be disconnected from the things about ourselves that we on a deep level don't accept mm. and as long as you try to do something you fail to come into acceptance deeper over who you are mm. and an acceptance deeper over who you are leads you to be able to manifest better things in your life because you get you know a reflection of who you are and if there are parts about you that you are rejecting, then you're holding that heavy energy within you. And so challenges come into your life because of the fact that there are challenges needed to wake you up to the fact that you're doing something wrong. So challenges keep coming because you keep holding on to this energy and keep manifesting issues alongside of this energy. And it's the universe just knocking, saying, hello, you know, wake up, you're doing things that is not working and you need to wake up and the way to wake up is to move into this state of allowance mm. to realize that you controlling things was never about taking you anywhere but only ever 
to run away from what you were experiencing internally that you lost conscious awareness of. Mm. It's good stuff, man. It's powerful. Yeah. I mean, the sages have said that before, that essentially suffering is what brings us to God um, in one way or the other. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. In one way or the other, it's kind of like, you got the message yet? You get mm. it yet? <laughs> nope. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. Like you said, just constant knocking at the door, and it's up to us to open the door, yeah, per se. Surrender yet? You're going to allow it yet? Or are you going to keep fighting? So we have to up the challenges a little bit. <laughs> yeah, keep exactly. the suffering going a little bit harder so that yeah. eventually it's going to be so bad that you have no other way than to surrender. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. In that way, I see suffering as grace. It might be tough to see in the moment when one is suffering, that's for sure, when one is in pain, but taking yeah. a step back from it now and speaking with you now, it does seem like some sort of grace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's an invitation to invitation. what it is that you see. And you just gotta see it for what it is. But when you're going through it and the ego is fighting, it's, um, it's painful and it's mm -hmm. suffering. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's hard and it's supposed to be hard, so. Yeah. yeah oh man powerful stuff we're getting right into this thing today hmm. now do you think eventually that's where this path this pathless path leads all of us to sort of transcend our suffering or maybe see our suffering a little bit differently so that we can handle the woes of life the darkness of life a little bit easier and uh yeah walk with god along life do you use God? Do you say God? Yeah, I can say God. Usually I would say universe, actually. Mm. But I don't mind saying God. But mm -hmm. usually I say universe or consciousness. Yeah. But yeah, they're the same thing for me. Many different names. <laughs> yeah. Same essence. Names for the same thing. Yeah. It's just your preference, I suppose. Very true. Yeah. So is that... uh? Is that where this thing is all going for us? You know, eventually we're walking hand in hand in this experience with God and knowing that there is a greater force that is always looking out for us. It may seem crazy. Like always? Yes, always. Always looking out for us. It might not seem like it, like we said, but yeah. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. So you, th you think that's where it's all going is that we're all going to be able to see this eventually somehow, some way? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, what's your heart say, man? It's it's hard. Sometimes I move back into that space where I don't trust. Mm. Not like I am I always in the space of feeling the protection and the grace of the universe. Mm -hmm. Today, you might not notice it, but. I've been experiencing kind of a challenging day today. And even today, I was, you know, scared a lot, a lot scared. And um, going through some things where I shift from acceptance and understanding and then quickly can move back into that space where I feel like I'm disconnected. I need to do something. I'm a bit scared. Yeah. But I think in the end, when it's all said and done, we're moving away from that and more into this connection with source, with universe, with God. If you're on that path, of course, not everyone is here on this planet and moving on this path. We all have different things that we're doing and that we are experiencing within our reality, um, which is much, as much as of an experience as the experience that I'm having. There's no like right or wrong here. No, no, we're just here to learn, to experience, to understand what it means to be who we are, really. And just see what that is about. Just see what it's like to be this human here. Like, wow, I first of all need to allow that through the heart and through the acceptance of who I am in order to learn. Mm. And in that, I think, is the meaning of life. Just allow yourself to be and experience what that is like. There's nothing more to it than that, really. Yeah, that's it, man. Well said. Yeah. Yeah. 
the meaning of life is to learn what it means to be human and all of its ups and downs. And it's a, it's a work in progress. And I feel as though we never really figure it out per se. There's not really like a point like, oh, I got it. <laughs> you know? No. And usually when you come to that point, it's, um, it's the wrong thing almost. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's just another trap. Yeah. Um, I feel that. I feel that just as I have days of forgetting just as you do and everybody else that's listening, we have days of like, oh, is there really a God? There's also days where I'm like, yeah, hundred percent. Of course I got it all figured out. Look at me. I'm so holy. It's the spectrum. Mm -hmm. I feel as though the human experience is this journey of some sort of spectrum between the light and the darkness. It's interesting yeah. to say the least. Um, but, but the thing is, once you know that God is real, even on the darkest days when you got your doubts, there's still that glimmer. This is me personally speaking. There's always that glimmer of like, you know what? I saw what I saw. I felt what I felt. I, mm. I you know, I kind of tapped in with God a little bit before and that never has left me. Like it's always in my soul. And I've, my life, I go through shit just like anybody else. And I still have that little glimmer of faith. Like I said, it's a spectrum. Some days are more than others. But the, to me, I feel as though once you see it, it's very hard to unsee it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. It's, uh, no, there's uh, definitely a knowing in my heart that yeah. the things that I now know is real. It's real to me. I know it's truth for me. And that, that never goes away at this point. Mm. But uh, I can sleep a little bit and catch myself on a day where perhaps something very challenging is experienced within me. And my brain wants to distract from that, that I can for a moment forget until I re remind myself a little bit that, wow, okay, it's okay. These are just old programs that I'm falling back into. Yeah. And this is not who I am. These are just things where I'm attaching my awareness onto, mm -hmm. perhaps a trail of thoughts or some action that I'm taking that I think is everything, but it's just something that I'm clinging on to at the moment because I'm a bit uncomfortable. Mm. But yeah, I don't, uh, that, uh, that knowing is always here. It doesn't go away at this point. And it has been like that for many years for me now, um, at least three or four years, at least I would say. My awakening came kind of rapidly. From the beginning, I was an atheist up until like, five years ago, I think, where I didn't believe in God and I and I would make fun of people in my <laughs> logical ways of it, making them look silly for yeah. even considering the fact that there could be something more. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. How naive we were, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I yeah, think it's because um, it's the, it's a product of, if you're somewhat intelligent and you rationalize things, it's very hard to rationalize stuff that is somewhat supernatural like you can't intellectualize god it doesn't really work like there's no mathematical proof there's no equation for god there's nothing that you can read and be like oh yep it's more of just like this very very subtle knowing within one's being through i don't know we all have our different experiences but like once you see it you can't unsee it like i said and it's not something that you really figure out rationally no. It's hard to explain. It's very hard to explain, but it's just like happens in a way. Um, would you want to get into like w what your experience was like? Do you think that's relevant at all? I don't think it's that relevant, to be honest. I mean, there's a few things that I might touch on. Um, what uh, specifically would you, what are you thinking about? Like how I got into this stuff or? Um, let me think. <sighs> yeah. What was like the moment? Did you have like a, just a transcending moment that led you past this rationality where you were like, wait a second, maybe these believers are on to something, you know, um, when you lost your atheism pretty much, you know, and you f mm. figured out there's a little bit more going on. Well, I'd, I'd say that there are a number of stages to that where things really was shook up. Um, so one that is big, I guess I was, uh, in the hospital and I thought that I was dying at one point 
Wow. Um, and it was a very rough night. And to make things short, they sedated me um, because I was going completely crazy in my mind because I was feeling extremely bad and I was also poisoned at the moment. Um, and I woke up the next day, surprised to still be alive. And this triggered something within me that led to a lot of health problems for about two years. And these health problems would get worse and worse and worse and worse. And eventually, um, about two years after that event, I found myself in my parents' summer place. And the symptoms were so bad at that point that I couldn't even be in the city anymore. I was just out in the woods by myself, pretty much. And then I was terrified every single day because I was this logical person that lived my life through the brain and saw myself as this brain. And if the brain goes off, then I'm dead. My worst fear. Mm -hmm. I didn't have this connection, deeper connection with myself that I was searching for in my life. And there was a lot of fear connected to that. But at that point, my suffering was just so high that one night there, these symptoms started getting so intense. And usually I fight it. I start pinching myself and I start like washing myself with water and I start pacing around and I'm like thinking a billion thoughts. But this time I decided that it's okay. I'm just going to die. I'm done. I don't want to suffer anymore. So I was laying in my bed and the symptoms got super intense and I finally embraced them. I was like, okay, it's time to die. I don't care anymore. And then the symptoms were pretty intense. And then I started pausing a little bit. And during this two year period, I was slowly finding more content on spiritual stuff. It was slowly starting to popping up. So the ideas were starting to plant into me that there's more to you. You can accept this. You can, you know, you're not just this mind and body. And, I, and at this point, then I finally accepted the fact that there's more to me. There's more to me than just this mind and body. And I let go of that in that moment. And that was, I think, the first big shift I made away from atheism to believing that there is much more. And that was my first real connection there, pretty much. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty powerful, man. I ask that question to pretty much everybody I bring on just because I find it interesting. And honestly, it's not relevant. Like your experience and anybody else's experience isn't really relevant to another person's awakening experience per se. Mm. I just find it interesting. And I, the correlation I find between everyone's experience is that it's an embrace sort of of dying you know the buddhist saying of you got to die before you die and then you don't you don't ever really die i think that's really what it surrounds and it it's around the ego it's around thinking we're just the body if you let that idea die that you're just this body just the five senses just the pleasures and aversions of this experience if you let that die and you accept what you really are a great acceptance then comes yes true liberation man um yeah. truly knowing what you are past the body past rationale of the brain and that is like hey that's hallelujah once you do that it's not easy that's for sure but sometimes we do have to go to the brink of uh the brink yeah. of our demise to be able to realize that yeah powerful. that's what we're blessed with the suffering so we can go there mm -hmm. there it is exactly yeah <sighs> Wow, that's good stuff. That's powerful stuff, man. Yeah, and I guess the you know the ego is the one that's dying, right? And the ego, the way that I talk about it, is a protection mechanism from your emotional state and your energy. So the death of the ego is an acceptance of the energy within yourself. Mm -hmm. You need to allow that into your acceptance without judging it or telling yourself that now I'm dying. And just allow it to be. And it's just a shift from trying to do something about this by running through the distractions, through what it is that you're doing. In my case, it was a lot of overthinking. And I also was extremely hard on myself in different ways and always was on the go, on the move, very toxic, masculine kind of drive to perform and achieve it at one point also. And 
yeah, that ego part of me slowly dissolved as I allowed this energy within me that was suppressed my entire life to emerge more. Also, even after this sort of big transition took place, this just ramped up and became more and more of. And yeah, that was the first initiation for me to move into allowance so that this process could continue because you're always changing. You're a part of this world and the universe is doing the work for you in the state of acceptance. We always think that we have to do the work, but yeah. we don't. We just sit back and relax and enjoy. The universe takes care of it, works through our emotions, through the acceptance and the feeling of them. The acceptance of this energy that we might not even be aware of that we perhaps have right now. Sometimes you can notice it very quickly as soon as you just let go of this attachment that you have. But in some cases, you need to really practice this stuff. Yes, because of how unconscious a lot of people are, how unconscious I was at one point. I had no idea that I even had emotions. I was so disconnected. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's a, that's a pandemic that we don't speak of in our world today. I mean, it has been spoken of. I'm not the first one saying it, but being able to embrace your emotions, especially as a man, um, yeah, it's, it's a very distant thing. Like it's not, it's like almost not okay to do that, but it's pivotal. It's like something we truly need to do in order to yeah. come to this. Yeah. Yeah. And I like how you said it works through you too. It's something that just works through you. Like you become like an instrument to this, to the force per se. And uh, yeah, you kind of just go with that and know how to recognize that within oneself and just go with that, man. It's, it is, I do feel that I feel as though uh, I like to say I'm like an instrument of uh, of the divine in a way you know playing the song of god not always on tune that's for sure but always know how to tune in a way and uh yeah many different metaphors but it's something like akin to surrender like you already mentioned surrendering to some kind of force and having that just guide us through life you know? yeah that's the way to live uh let me ask you this one man how would you describe if you could the difference in your will, even though it's not your will, or the will that comes about or the energy in your body that is different, having this work through you, rather than you think you're the, the master and commander, you know, you're at the helm. When you do actually accept and surrender this greater force, how would you describe the difference in like how you view, it's hard this is such a general question but I'll, I'll ask it anyway like how would you describe how you're different in the way that you see life or maybe like how you treat people is there like more of a more of a you know attraction toward compassion like living through the heart selflessness uh, how would you describe how you're different from when you were an atheist per se I mean, when you live in the ego, everything is about your survival. That's literally what the ego is. It's a survival mechanism. Mm -hmm. And when you're operating from the heart, you're not living in survival. You already have everything that you need. Mm -hmm. And when you're in that state, it's easy to give to others. It's easy to give back. That's what you want to do. You feel amazing and you want to share that with others. Yeah. And you know, you just follow your excitement pretty much when you live in the heart and things tend to work out because you're protected and blessed on that path of your excitement through the heart. And when you are living through the ego, even though I guess it's, it's a little bit different depending on the person, but mm -hmm. usually when you live on the ego, at least in my case, everything backfires. And I guess it's the same for everyone pretty much. Um, even though on some level people might convince themselves that they're doing well because they get the money or they get the success or they get the accomplishment and they're like, I am doing good, right? <laughs> but on a spiritual level, you're completely lost still and just detached from true fulfillment and true joy, which comes from living in this space. I guess, um, yeah, just living from the heart, I realized that just how much I like other people. And like, yeah. that's, that's a part of me though, who I am. I, mm -hmm. I love other people. That's one of my highest priorities in life, just other people. And that priority turns into 
nothingness when I live from the ego, because then I'm scared to make a deep connection with other people and I reject everything. So I can't even make a connection with other people when I'm working from my ego, because then I'm scared of getting too close. So in order for me to even connect to my highest value, I need to live through my heart because only there can I make the sort of connection that aligns with that. Mm. Mm -hmm. <sighs> that's a big difference. And that's a win-win for both parties. It's a win for you to love them and it's a win for them to be loved. Yeah, mm. it sounds corny and cliche, man, but it's the truth. It's the truth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> yeah, that's a really big difference. It goes from almost, in a way, maybe an over oversimplification, but from competition to cooperation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. And the thing is, uh, you know, we like to talk about killing the ego. Um, I feel as though there's always that essence of ego. There's always that essence of like sort of status and glamour that's within us. But it's no longer like the top priority. Like those manifestations of the ego are not the top priority of this will that I spoke about. It becomes like a passenger in the in the in the you know, it's a it's in the passenger seat when God's in the driver's seat. Or maybe it's like it's the servant and not the master. When prior it was the master and that's it. And you, you followed the master of the ego and that yeah, that's kind of a grind that could get messy. That could mess mm -hmm. up your life. And uh, I think also another good thing you pointed out was that the manifestations and achievements of the ego that come about, whether it is status or money or, you know, stuff that makes us look cool. Um, yeah, that's that that might bring some kind of pleasure and satisfaction. But it's all temporary. That's, you know, that's Buddhism 101 those things are all going to fade one way or the other. And if you pin your happiness just to that, that's the cap, that's mm. going to cause suffering because none of that lasts forever. So I think what we're alluding to here is a sort of fulfillment and satisfaction and joy that is eternal, that really does last forever. It lasts beyond, I mean, it la the stuff comes and goes. We can still have fruits of our labor. That's the beautiful part of it. We can still have that stuff. But to know that like that's not it, that's not the pinnacle of happiness, to know that always in with our fruits and without our fruits, we have this joy that is within and that we are. That's kind of what I feel as though we're alluding to here, something that truly lasts forever beyond the comings and goings of this life. Um, and that, man, hallelujah, when you can see that. It's pretty powerful. I am. And I feel like even the ego is not some evil thing either. So when you say like, kill the ego, that's like, you want a healthy ego. Ego is yeah. always going to be a part of you. It's not about killing the ego. It's about, as you're saying, to make uh, soul the soul, the master and the ego follows and not the other way around. Yeah. And you could say you're like, you're turning the ego into, or you're using the ego to want things and not to need things because it can never satisfy needs the ego that comes yeah. from the heart and the soul. So you're still perhaps, or most definitely going to want things, but it's important to not get lost in that place where you mistake them for something that you need when you actually need is just a deeper connection with self. Mm -hmm. Well said. Now, in order to stay aligned, do you feel as though you have simplified your life a lot? Because that's how I kind of see monks, you know, they're on this wavelength and they're the great um, example, the great of a great simplification of life so that they can stay aligned to God or the Dharma, whatever they believe. Do you feel as though that's happened in your life since you have felt this essence like you have externally and maybe internally as well simplified your wants and needs? I guess in a sense, but my life is similar in a lot of ways. I like to stay active. I still do a lot of the things that I used to do. Mm -hmm. It was never about changing the things that I did in a lot of cases. It was just about coming from it from a different angle, not through the ego, but through the soul. So, I got you, yeah. and um, I recently started meditating a little bit again for my own reasons, but 
the traditional sense of meditating then when you spend some time you go down and you sit down and focus on trying to meditate even though the way that i look at meditation it's you don't have to do anything to meditate it's just a state of beingness and so in that sense i meditate a lot in my life and it doesn't require me to change a lot about situation that I'm in or the things that I'm doing or the things that I want or anything. My life is quite similar in a lot of sense, even though I have moved away from a lot of the very destructive things that I did in the within the ego, like partying and drugs and alcohol and a bunch of different things that I don't really touch anymore because I don't have that craving anymore. Mm. But I still pursue my past passions and do a lot of different things. Just recently, I started MMA, actually, which is super scary for me. Uh, it's mixed, mixed martial arts, and uh, but I feel like my heart really wants to do this. Like, it's a lot of fun, and I stay very active there, um, trying to learn, trying to do things. And uh, yeah, my lifestyle is not very simple. I do a lot of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, maybe it's like you find the simplicity in still doing a lot of stuff. Like, you, you know, like you keep it simple and what you like and what's good for you. As in you already, you got rid of the destructive stuff. You didn't, you know, you didn't get messy with the, the drugs and the partying and whatever else you did that was destructive. So in that way, I see a, a, a certain simplification. I guess, uh, I know what you mean though. Your lifestyle doesn't really have to change if you are sort of on a meditative state at all points you know if you're if you're at that wavelength without having to change your lifestyle you don't have to change your lifestyle i feel as though a lot of people do though and it's hard to speak in generalizations because we're all different we all have our own karma we all have our own circumstances so it's hard to say um i just feel a lot of people do need to do that like they do need to figure out what isn't working for them and simplify a lot whether it's their diet the media they consume the people they're with and just get rid of all the infinite stimuli that we have and kind of hone in on really what works. And I guess that's what I get at, getting at with simplification. Um, yeah. yeah, you don't have to become a monk, that's for sure. I just see them as the greatest example of doing that so that they can stay aligned. And we all do that in our own way. We all reach our own monkhood and Buddhahood, you could say, in our own yeah. way. Yeah, yeah man. Um, just curious, what kind of MMA do you do? Is it just, is it also, is it grappling and also like stand up or is it jujitsu, like a certain style? Um, I've been doing Muay Thai and, oh. uh, no G I'm starting to learn a little bit. Um, yeah, but uh, at this point on my journey, I still have to hold back a lot and listen to my body because it requires so much downtime from all of the changes it's going through. Mm -hmm. Um, so I can't really do much in that area as much as I absolutely want to right now. And I'm in acceptance of that. Um, but yeah, I'm just taking sort of baby steps in a lot of areas um, because of my personal situation. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't say that, you know, I am in a complete meditative state all the time because as I mentioned previously, um, Sorry, my dog just walked in here. It's okay, bring him in. <laughs> hey, Tesla. Yes. Say to the camera, Tesla. Tesla? Yeah, his name is Tesla. Nice. <laughs> yeah. He comes from Bosnia also. Where oh, wow. Nice one, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. We have a guest. That's great, man. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, what were we talking about? Uh, well, you're talking about how you're not always in the meditative state. Uh, we're talking about great simplification of life. Uh, yeah, so. Yeah, because I get caught up a lot in my brain. Uh, sometimes when things are starting to get challenging for me still to this day. So. Yeah. And I think that what you touched on is something that I am myself getting more into. And I realize that I need a little bit more conscious awareness in a lot of areas to really hone in on my health, for example. So that is why I have started to more deliberately slow down more to focus on that. And will I continue doing that? We'll see. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I think there's a lot of value in what you're saying there, for sure. And that there are still things that I'm learning as well, for sure. <laughs> as we all are, right? Work in progress. Yeah. yeah. I think it's, it's good to have that sense of humility within to know that uh, even though we both have a sense of knowing, 
of the process that we're a part of, a little sense, a little glimpse into it. It's also good to balance that out with humility and knowing that we're still these futile human beings that really know nothing about ourselves. Like even though we, you know, we've felt God in a way, that really means nothing. You know, we're still the dance. We're still dancing the dance here of being human. So it's yeah. good to have that balancing act of humility and, and holiness within oneself. Yeah. You know? I think that's really what it's about to be human, man. Somehow we're like, uh, we're in between animals and angels. That's the human being. We're like yeah. somehow in this balancing act between our animalistic instincts and pursuits and then the holy pull from God. And we have to, in the world, especially in the Western world, we have to like, we have to dance that dance. You can't be too holy because then you're going to be just unrelatable and you're going to be fake. Essentially, that's uh, you can't be become a god. I mean, not a god. You can't become a monk and live in the Western world, per se. Like you can't fake it. You can't be fake holy, essentially. But then you also can't get too much into materialism because then you'll get lost in the sauce and essentially build a life of suffering, you know, temporary pleasures and aversions. And uh, it's like you can't embrace one too much and you can't avert the other one too much. It's, I, that's what I find, at least. It's, it's a healthy balance. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And like, you know, at the, at the core of things, it's not about anything of what you're doing, really. It's just about from what place you're coming from. Mm -hmm. And then that place that you're coming from is going to show you what is interesting and what it is that is really cool for you. Maybe you're into like really expensive, nice cars, like from the heart, like that's mm -hmm. what you want to do. Like that's, mm -hmm. that's a possibility. Like, or maybe you're into making a lot of money from the heart. Fine, go yeah. for it. Yeah. You know? Don't, I mean, you, you can live your life how you want to, but you can also go down the route of suffering where you're using those things because you think it's what you need when it's actually not right. So. Yeah, man. Yeah, so essentially it's all about intention in every, every action in our life it's all about where is that coming from so yeah sure. that's it that's yeah, it man. even in like the smallest moments i feel as though that's where it shines through you know like when you're holding the door for somebody or you know you ask somebody how they're doing mm -hmm. just you know you don't have to you don't have to build this grandiose life you, you don't it's really like in the most simple ways like i talked about before in the smallest ways yeah. Yeah, living from the heart shines through, you know? Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's those small, simple things that you can do that really matters. I agree. And then if you live too much in the ego, then you feel small and you need something big instead. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, that's the irony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <sighs> it's definitely an interesting thing, this, this, uh, this human experience, man, you know? It's definitely an interesting thing in the time that we're alive. Interesting times, that's for sure. Yeah, so can, very interesting. Think about it, we can do this. Like I'm, you know, you're in Sweden, I'm um, in Boston. We're talking about this stuff, like we're mm -hmm. in the same room. It's just, yeah. uh, it's a miracle to be alive. At the end of the day, we can think what we want to think about it and talk about it all we want and say this is how it is or this is how it isn't. But at the end of the day, <laughs> surrendering to the great miracle, that's all you need, man. Not that mm. you need it. There's nothing that you need, really. Yeah. But that's that's all there is. That's all there is to do. If there is anything to do, it's surrender to the great miracle and be in a sort of amazement and awe of the miracle that we're in and the times we're in, man. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> and all the ups and downs. It's powerful stuff, man. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think uh, we could probably start to wrap this thing up. I think that's a good note to wrap it up at. Uh, do you have anything else that you want to say? Anything you want to get off your chest? No, not at all. This was uh, very fun for me. So yeah. thank you for uh, having me. It's cool talk, man. Definitely cool. Went back quick. Damn. Um, yeah, fast. Well, I appreciate you coming on here, man. Um, I think you have a bright future ahead of you. Keep on keeping on. Uh, there's something about your spirit that I can tell is very earnest in this understanding. So keep on, keep it on. And um, yeah, that's it. I wish you all the best and thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And peace and love to you and peace and love to anybody that listened this long. Goodbye.